So can you touch on like what separates a player that goes pro from like just another athlete? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I'd say it's probably just their determination to want to go pro and keep playing at a higher level. Um, a lot of college girls, because they've played at, a, let's say, a D1, you know, big school. After that, they're like, I'm done. I don't want to play anymore. Like, I've been playing my entire life. Like, I just want to break. Like, that's what that's what some players just tend to do. Um, I realized when I was playing and I was in school and I was like, I don't, I don't want to go to the real world yet. Like I want to keep playing and I'm good. <laughs> so I, yeah, I had, um, I was like all American. I had like top kills. I was like the WCC player of the year. I was like female athlete of the year for my college. Like I was like, okay, I, I can keep playing if I want to. And then I found out that there was the opportunity to do that um, indoor, you know, overseas. So I was like, I love traveling too. Why not? So I think it's a lot to do with like the determination and the skill level, but even some D2 players, if they wanted to go overseas, they totally could because the level is just different over there. It's just a little slower pace that they would do fine. <laughs> yeah. Is yeah. There is there an age ceiling or general range that you kind of age out of volleyball? Oh, uh, let's see. We had a 40 year old on our team. <laughs> so I would say up to 40 um, people were still playing uh, more of the local players were 40, but like, as far as Americans, I know there's some pro players that are still playing that are in their late thirties now. So I mean, it's just as long as your body will hold up, I suppose, and you yeah. want to. <laughs> well, not points towards like we were talking earlier, like focus on the mechanics and the strengths so you prevent injuries. Yep, that is big. You always think like, oh, I won't get injured. It's fine. And then you have this one big blowout or big ankle sprain and you're done for a while. <laughs> uh, is, it, is, the, is it a life you'd recommend shooting for for somebody that wants it? Yeah, I would say everybody that wants to try to play volleyball like professionally should at least try it one year <laughs> if they can. Um, I think it's worth it because half the people in the U.S. probably have not seen another country. <laughs> so there's so much to learn with the culture, obviously the different styles of playing and the people there. Um, and especially if you like traveling, which I do, it's the easiest way to go places for free like they'll pay for everything and then obviously when we go play another country um like we made the euro cup game and that was in bulgaria like i would have never tried to travel to bulgaria on my own so it was super cool to go somewhere it's like oh i've been to bulgaria and estonia have you like no why would i go there it's like actually it's really beautiful <laughs> you right. should can you and this is me speaking out of pretty pure ignorance can you touch on like beach versus indoor volleyball oh sure yeah um so beach volleyball is two on two um and they actually when i graduated college in 2008 they just started beach volleyball as a collegiate sport for scholarships that was not a thing so you just played beach you paid your way to play beach. So if you wanted to play in the AVP and the pros, you had to pay to enter to play. And then if you won, then you won money. But if you didn't win, you didn't win anything. <laughs> and you had to pay to go there wherever it was. So beach is two on two, a lot more strategy. Everybody has to know every skill you have to set, you have to pass, you have to hit, you have to serve, like you have to do all of it. Whereas indoor is six on six and you're very specific, uh, specialized positions. So me being in middle, I was like solely the primary like hitter and blocker, you know? And then when I rotated to the back row, I would be subbed out because usually the shorter, you know, liberos and the de defensive specialists would be playing back row for me. So I didn't get to pass like ever <laughs> until I started playing beach in the summers. And then I was like, oh, I got to learn how to pass. Oh my God. <laughs> so I wish I would have learned that before. So I would say like, 
a good advice for people that want to play either is to do be well versed in all the positions if you can <laughs> like learn every position because it, it comes in handy and I think that's why a lot of California schools are really good is because they play beach since they're little and they learn all the skills and then indoor they it's easier transition for them because they can play anything so right so it's easier to go hypothetically from beach to indoor, indoor. instead of vice versa probably yeah probably it takes plus a little the, bit the floor of sand is going to absorb all your force when you're yeah. trying to jump as opposed to uh, yeah you'll uh, fly when you're going yeah. from beach to indoor you'll be like wow i can jump but when you go from indoor to sand you're like i'm not getting <laughs> off the ground like why is it so hard to jump which that's what everyone says. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so that, that kind of leads to the last stuff, but just kind of for advice for people who want to get better at volleyball, uh, just like, and that could be like basic skills, like court awareness, flow of the game, working with the team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I, you know, start as early as you want. And there's always, you know, a high school league, a city league, a club team, depending on the level you want to do or what you can afford, there's so many options. And then on top of that, a lot of the club teams do individual lessons. So if you want to get really good at a specific skill, if it's you want to get really good at passing or you want to get really good at setting or just need that little extra help where the team practice can't get you because obviously the coach has 12 girls. So she can't like one-on-one -on -one sit with you and say okay this is how we're going to work on setting when we have the whole team that needs to practice together so yeah individual lessons are a big thing for helping develop a lot of those skills yeah yeah and um, some stuff i'll add uh not having been a pro athlete but just knowing about training is doing the skills like every day and yeah. uh, like with both skills and the weightlifting stuff do it so you're not sore the next day so you can keep going because that'll add right. up a ton over time yep and it builds muscle memory yep. so a lot of the time you just need the muscle memory to like get this serve down and get this hitting and if you just practice it every day and like when i teach camps and you know younger girls i say you know do this approach because the approach is hard, right? It's kind of a left, right, left, my arms go up, then I swing, then I land, <laughs> like it's a lot happening. So I was like, just get the footwork down. And once you don't have to think about it anymore, then it just comes naturally and you can tweak everything else above with the shoulder and the arm and the hand, so. Yeah, and so that'll, that'll be huge. And then also just, you know, you, you get, what a couple hours if you're at the junior high high school age you get a couple hours of practice but the yeah. stuff that you go do on your own that's gonna set you apart and make you that much better yep if you have a yard to just bump around or play against the wall <laughs> even like that's helped a ton for yeah. kids um, and there was a in john t reed's book uh he talked about he coached volleyball for a girls high school team, I believe for a season. And they had some kind of construction in the school where they, on the court, uh, it wasn't like a full size basketball court. It's like one of those mini ones where they like had okay. barely any space outside the court itself. So they okay. couldn't practice serving and the girls were complaining about like, oh, we can't practice. And it's like, you know what? No, we're gonna focus on what we can do. And they, they ended yep. up doing really well because they focused on like the aiming all the other stuff and passing. Yeah, exactly. And sometimes, yeah, like if you're used to example that actually came up at my practice the other day is like, you may be used to serving from, I don't know, 10 feet behind the end line because you like those deep serves. Mm -hmm. Well, some, courts that you play in and another team gym they don't have that space behind the line so you got to step up right at the line so now you have to like change your whole serve so you got to focus on the small individual like skill of just standing and serving you can't jump serve for example or something so yep it's a lot of adapting yeah i'm assuming just for like kind of learning the flow of the game like watching high level play and yeah kind of watching specifically what if you're doing indoor like what your person someone with mm -hmm. the, has your kind of role focus on mm -hmm. what they're doing and how they're moving even if they're not actively hitting the ball yeah. like how they're getting in position for the next play 
Uh, yep, exactly. That's, especially if you're a visual learner, like yeah. that's huge. And well, then what else helps is if you or the coach can record you doing something like record you serving. And when you tell them like, oh, you're dropping your elbow, like, what does that mean? They don't get it. And then they watch themselves. They're like, oh, yeah. I see what I'm doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, just working with the team is like just, you know, uh, I mean, sports psychology and we'll just say, don't be an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, be nice. Be how, treat how you want to be treated. <laughs> yeah. well, like a big thing is like, you know, be supportive because you're going to mess up too. <laughs> like, right. Because it's a team sport, like volleyball is literally a game of errors. So whoever makes the least amount of errors wins. <laughs> so you know you're gonna make a mistake. Somebody has to at some point. The ball has to hit the ground. So yeah. Well, yeah. And, and tennis, there's it's called playing the losers game, and it's like it's just keeping the ball in in play, like in their side of the court. And right. Uh, they yep. make a mistake. Yep. Instead that's exactly what we game. tell them. We're like, let them make a mistake, <laughs> and that's that usually works. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't necessarily translate to something like martial arts, but like, uh, yeah, exactly. Like so basketball sport thing. But, <laughs> anyway, like it depends on the sport, but that's cool that volleyball and tennis have that same thing. So. Yeah, I liked tennis. I like just playing for fun. <laughs> yeah. um, so anyway, I think that's about what I had for questions. Um, if cool. viewers want any more stuff, I know how to get a hold of Laurel, so she can answer more yeah i'm on social media and stuff too so yeah I reach out to her directly yeah <laughs> but anyway so thanks for being on the show yeah no problem thanks